What's up, nerdlings? Yo! We have something very special for you guys. At BransonCon 2020, one of the fun things you could do is join the Kevin Sorbo VIP group. Mm -hmm. And what we got to do was actually listen to Kevin himself offer some commentary over an episode of Hercules. It was amazing. It was basically like we were living our childhood all over again. We got to sit there and watch an episode of Hercules. But what made it even better was that the man himself was giving us some inside tips on it. Now, obviously, we did not record that part because, you know, copyright infringement and everything. But there was some time before the episode mm -hmm. started. And Kevin was actually nice enough to take questions from the oh, yeah. audience, from the people that were in there. So we did try to record some of that. And we're going to share that with you right now. Enjoy, everybody. You know, what was that Dana Cook, I remember I saw stand up and he was doing, and he said that you can't say bless you, you say God bless you, because if you just say bless you, that's wrong because you're not God. <laughs> so, that was kind of funny. <laughs> Dana, Dana, Dana Cook? The comedian, remember Dana, Dana, Dana Cook? Dana Cook, yeah. I know, I haven't seen him in stuff in a long time. What are you doing now? I saw him <laughs> many years ago. I thought he did a pretty good job at the, um, I the name of the movie. The big cast of it. I know it's gonna be tough to find a seat. <laughs> I know it's just. So, have you guys ever been here to see like a concert or something or a show? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. But I live like a quarter of a mile from here. You've never seen. Do they get a lot of production here? I just did a million dollar project. Yeah. Oh, they did? Oh, that's cool. So is it, it uh, obviously, is it mostly when the weather's nice and then you need the tourists, like spring, summer, and fall? Yeah. No, but no big Christmas show? That would be a big yeah. Christmas show. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Right. Okay. I, I thought I saw... Here it's all it was um, the Gatlin brothers. Larry Gatlin's a friend of mine. I played with him before that. Yeah. 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 Is this the one? Yeah. Maybe, I'm sorry, you know, maybe it's just the montage one. I may have grabbed the wrong reel. Yeah, this isn't the one with all the different chapters on it. It's still fun. Yes. Um, um, there was one that you saw in there, I can't remember her name now, it's driving me crazy. Did you ever see Liar Liar with Jim Carrey? Yeah. yeah. And he gets in the elevator with a very yeah. busted, that, that was her. That was in there. Like Billy and something? She was pretty good. <laughs> I, you know, he's supposed to be professional, but I'm not enjoying this. Another one is Monica Schnarr, if you know that. She was on Beastmaster, Big Tall Blonde. She's another Canadian. She did a couple episodes of this, and uh, we had a pretty heavy scene on the drama. <laughs> and just, she's just like, so you're married, right, afterwards? <laughs> it wasn't for five minutes, or anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the blacksmith. That was that was Corey Everson. Corey Everson was um, um, uh, six-time Miss Olympia. She was like a female Arnold Schwarzenegger. She was funny. She was a who to work with. Her her husband ended up being my dentist for like ten oh. years. <laughs> um, after the show, um, she came down. She was a like a three-time All-American at, at Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, in the pentathlon. Not, they don't do the decathlon, but the pentathlon. And she was, there's a fight scene we did with her where she's taking out these creatures. It was one of the Olympics, we did the Olympics, where I, I created the Olympics, of course. <laughs> and she jumps up in the air with two guys coming out and does the splits, like five feet above the air, and her legs aren't there, and perfect timing to kick the guys. It was so cool. 
I said, my pants don't let me do that. So, my pants, by the way, were three layers of leather and weighed 12 pounds. So a lot of you don't know when I was doing those fights and grinds, it was a workout in those pants. But it looked good, they liked the way it looked. But my feet were getting killed in these, these boots, so they finally were putting a pair of, of tennis shoes inside the boots so I could wear two shoes like this. And we went out there. I got three of the five original outfits, still. So um, I had a guy offered me a lot of money for one time. And uh, this, uh, I took, I didn't steal it, it was on my contract. I took a lot of props. <laughs> I took a lot of props from both shows. I have all my original scripts from Hercules and Andromeda that I use on the set with my notes and stuff. And then I have clean sets, which you can go online, go to kevinsilver.net, that with that original scripts signed by the cast. And um, I got a lot of the swords and stuff. There's some cool stuff. I have a quick question. Yes. So you said um, all the women that you, you uh, kissed. So if you could have an estimate in your mind, how many were they? How many women did I kiss? Other than your wife on the set, that you had to tell Sam about. <laughs> or didn't you? No, she knew about it. Did you count with your hands? Well, I mean, I didn't meet her until season four on Hercules. Um, I remember she came out to visit me. We started, we just really started, we, she had just done the episode we're gonna watch with Prince Hercules, where we met, and then she came back and did a three show arc. Um, she's on it for two months with me then, and that was, um, she played the Golden Hind, the doe deer, or female deer, which I did that line, thank you very much. I, I, I wrote that line in there. And we did it so many times because Michael Hurst could never keep a straight face. He kept laughing every time. So the last one was like the only one we could really use. And you realize, you see us cut out very quick on it because he, also, he started smiling right away. Because <laughs> we always came up with this just crazy stuff. When he played the Widow Twanky in the Fancy Free episode, in the dancing one, um, we worked the, the lines together all the time where there wasn't a script. When I, have, he, I, I say, she, she, he looks at me, he's a little twinky, he says, for the dance contest, you have to wear a different outfit. And I go, this is all I ever wear. And he goes, no, oh, I'm sick of it. Because <laughs> up until that episode, I never got to wear a different outfit. Yeah. And um, so it was kind of fun, we would joke, I know. Yes? Uh, just kind of an off-ball question, but did you ever get to ride in Sam Raimi's car? The ride in Sam Raimi's. The one that's in everything he does. No. No? Never did. Never did. We had a series I was going to do with Sam again, and NBC bought it, and Sony came in as a studio, and they made us do so many rewrites over like six rewrites, six rewrites over like six months. We thought this thing was for sure a go, and then the studio said, nah, I'm not going to do it. Which is too bad. It was, it was good. It wasn't touched by an angel, it was punched by an angel. <laughs> so it, was, um, it, it had a fake element to it, but it was, um, it was really it was really good. It's too bad they didn't do it. We still have it. We only own the, the rights back now, so we still hope to do it. Yes, sir? Yeah, uh, you mentioned another series you're going to be doing, the, the, the non-PC thing. The Meet the Pot ones. But you did some shorts like that on Blaze TV, didn't you? Those, that's where it's born from. Okay. But these are going to be half hour episodes now. Cool. Those shorts, The World funny. According to Billy Podwin, I yeah. think they were called. And those, in, they, they're funny. And that's why now they're expanding it to a half hour. Those were like 10 minutes, 11 yeah. minute yeah, little just, episodes. Yeah, I didn't know what to call those. And um, it was on Blaze TV, but now we have Netflix is interested in what we're doing on this and that. So it's pretty, it's pretty funny. Any idea from that one? Well, we filmed it in September and October. Um, I would guess it wouldn't come out until next year, sometime in January, February. But we're, we're filming those 10, I think, 10 episodes this year, it might be 12. So I gotta go back to LA. I just left. Suck me back in. <laughs> you have a question right here? What do you got, bud? My favorite, Kevin Smith was my favorite band to kind of fight. Aries. Aries was fun. My half brother. Yeah. You know, we have we had so many. I mean, so many bloopers between us. You know, there were a lot of bloopers you guys didn't see, which is too bad. I mean, a lot of times I'd make sure they print them. I don't know why they didn't spend the time or the money on them to do it. But people love the bloopers. Why? You know, that's why Jackie Chan does what he does. At the end of the movie, you see how tough those stunts are. You know. So is anybody here tomorrow for the? Um, I'm showing my movie at a church, uh, Miracle in East Texas. 
I hope you can get there at six o'clock. Um, it's a it's a good movie, but the outtakes at the end are pretty funny. They're pretty funny. I had to, I had to put them in because it was just it was just too good. Yes. Bad animation. Bad animation. <laughs> For the 90s, dude, that was good animation. <laughs> Back in the 90s, that was good animation. Um, it is funny because most of it, most of it doesn't play as well. Some of it still, I kind of get blown away. Oh, it still turned out pretty good. But take it up with the weather group. Take it up with the Lord of the Rings guys. That's the ones who did it. <laughs> but. Um, for the 90s, that was that was actually was actually pretty good. But you know, everything changed. I mean, you'll be laughing at the Avatar 20 years from now. But oh, look at that! I mean, look at today. I can walk in and fight anybody, and you know, it's still be beyond 3D. Yeah. Can you still catch the arrows with relative ease? You know, you know, that's a trick that you'll see every action guy in every movie, and they did it with you know, Dwayne Johnson and all that stuff. And what you do, it, it's a it's a whip hand from the camera as well. The timing's got to be right. So I have I have the arrow or the knife in my hand like that. Oh, okay. cool. Oh, wow. and they, they whip pan. And you're like there, and it works. It works. Like the giant episodes we did, you know, with with Typhoon. Um, it was just forced perspective. That's been around forever. It's a cheap shot to do, but it's easy to do, and it still works. Where you know he stands. You know, 50 feet away from me, and I'm standing here, and he gets a fixed point to look down, and the camera's on the other side, and it looks like this guy's, you know, 40 feet tall. And I'm sitting here, and I gotta pick a spot on a, on a cloud or something, <laughs> and then we do the scene together, even though he's way over there. But it, it, it's really effective, and it still works. I've done those, I'm sure so many people have done that. I've done that with my kids, where I'll have my one boy in front. And I put my daughter and other son way behind. He puts his hands up like this on both sides. He looks like he's holding them in their hands. You know, it's just it's fun. It's just an easy, easy thing to do. Yes. Uh, you said yesterday that you were Christian when you were uh, filming filming Hercules. How long have you been Christian? How did you come to God? Come to Christ? Yeah, I, 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 I believe my whole life. I just grew up that way. My family, my parents were that way. You know, I I, I had a hard time with my pastor. <laughs> Because um, he was just so boring. <laughs> but we had a youth pastor came in that was just a cool guy. And a guy, you know, in the early teens, he was a great guy to come around the right time to really... Wednesday night, we had a youth night at our church where we just kind of went... We called it the room. So there'd be about 20 of us guys in there, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. And then he'd be there. And that was our Wednesday nights. And that was just, that was kind of cool. And they took us on a field trip when I was 13 to see Reverend Billy Graham speak at the St. Paul Fairgrounds. 250,000 people there, it was unbelievable. And I felt moved to go up there, which was volunteer after a talk. It was a hot August night, full moon up, and it was just like, you know, mosquitoes just going crazy on us, because we get hot and humid in Minnesota too, I know it's hard to believe, but we do. July and August, cool. and then of course, four months later, we're 20 below, it was crazy. <laughs> So I went up, I'm sitting on the ground like I'm right now, and I was just talking with a guy. We weren't praying anything, we was talking, just kind of 30 year old dude, you know, 13, we're talking, just hanging out. All of a sudden the hand goes on my head, I turn around, it's Billy Graham. Oh. He blessed me. And he was a weird thing, because I stuck the goosebumps when I tell him. The full moon was right behind his head, so I was like, oh, oh wow. <laughs> right on his head, and I was like, <laughs> Is that you, Jesus? <laughs> so it was really kind of cool. And I told that story. And um, I was on 700 Club or TV, and some of it was. And Chicken Soup for the Soul called me up. And they said, Look, we're doing a book on Billy Graham's life. And Chicken Soup for the Soul, if you've ever seen the books, they're always paperback. They did a hardcover only for him. It's the only time they've ever done it. And I was one of the 101 stories. Well, the Billy Graham's people then called me up, the publicity team, and said, Billy loved your story, Reverend Billy loved your story. He's 95 at this time before he just passed, and he said, he would love it if you did the publicity for him and traveled around with you at the time. And I said, I'll make the time. So it's kind of cool to do that. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was fun to have that honor to do that and all these years later. But yeah, that was, so it's always been there for me, you know? And I've not led a perfect life, but I've never stopped having the belief that there's something bigger than us out there, you know, so how did this come here? Well, this, did this just appear? Well, no, somebody had to make it, right? So, um, 
we'll find out one day about everything, I guess. I'll go right here first. Well, you know, I, I know you're going at what Hercules had good values in it. It really did. I mean, it was like the families loved the show. It was great. I got a letter from the TV guy, the editor at the time, saying this is the show we watched together as a family. So that was pretty cool. Um, I've done, you know, I did a couple walking, walking tall ones. They were going to make a series out of. They were they were violent, but I mean, I played the good guy in it, you know. And uh, Sony and MGM were going to make a series out of it. But at that time, they were going through their own divorce, and they were splitting on the Sony by itself and MGM by itself, and they fought over titles, and the titles that they couldn't be decided upon, unfortunately, was one of mine, because we had the contract signed ready to go, so we shoot the series in Dallas, and it was just a bummer, because I, I had fun doing it. I was style walking tall with payback or Lone Justice, but they're good movies. And, I mean, they really are good movies. And they did very well for them, and you know, it was, it was supposed to be straight to DVD all the time, and, I didn't look like a Buford Puster, so they changed my name, and, was, and so, but uh, it was still the same storyline. <laughs> no, no, it was it was picking up where where they did the series or the movies back in the 1970s, early 1970s, with Joe Down, Joe Down Baker. So we're shooting the movies in Dallas, and Rascal Flatts found out that we were there, and Joe Don Rooney, the lead guitar for the Rascal Flatts is a huge fan, and he was named after Joe Don Baker because his father loved the original thing. And they come. So they invite us, we got to go backstage and meet him. Ever since then, Joe Don and I have been very good friends and golf buddies. I'll see him, I'll see him Monday after the Masters. We'll be golfing at that, at the Hooting the Blowfish Tournament in Myrtle Beach, which is a blast. I've done, they've been doing it for 25 years. I've probably done about 15 of the tournaments. They rent out the entire House of Blues for four days. We golf every day, and it's just crazy. Saturday and Sunday, we've got watch the Masters on a big screen like this at the House of Blues, and it's just it's just fun. You know, John Daly gets up every year, drunk, sings, knocking on heaven's door. You know, you know. <laughs> like John Trump, like, what are you saying to us, John? <laughs> you know, it's uh, but uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. Yes. If this was totally your choice, not necessarily the best Hercules, but just the best Hercules, Andromeda, God's Not Dead. Would we still be watching the same episode we were about to? I don't know. Say that again. Like, in other know. words, if, if it wasn't just Hercules, it was pick your favorite episode that you've partaked in, whether it's Adronima, okay. any of those, would it still be this one? I, I put this one in my, my top ten of, you know, of the 111 or whatever it was. Um, we did five to our movies as well. That's like another 22 episodes, same amount of time. Um, it's in there. I haven't seen it in a long, long time, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. I think a lot of times I put a couple episodes up that I directed, like The Apple or War Bride or something like that. Um, Mercenary, I loved, it was a really heavier episode. As much as Michael's, that was Michael's first time directing, and that was a much deeper, darker um, sort of, you know. We had the sand creatures, the sand shark type of things and stuff. But I mean, where I get really, I get really beat up, and I'm, I'm really in pain. And I thought this is kind of a, it was going to have more of a dramatic episode for a change, because I, I did love the comedy in it. But it was fun to have. You know, we had some episodes that were kind of dark. You know, I, I love that we did the Norse mythology. Ben Reed's a friend of mine. He played, he played Thor. I kicked his ass. <laughs> it's my show. <laughs> so, that's it. Uh, that's easy. That was when we were the trilogy of introducing Xena, which we didn't know we were going to make a series yet. They, they liked the idea of let's try it and see how the fans react. So, um, I had a problem with the storyline where, where Eolus turns against me, falls for Xena. And I said, you know, really would he just take off like that, that quick on our friendship? And we ended up in this huge fight. So we're doing this fight scene. And Peter Bell was our stunt choreographer. And we had double swords going and all this kind of stuff. And we're circled by all the Xena bad guys and we're fighting. I said, we don't, you know, Eolus, we shouldn't be fighting. And during the rehearsal, there was one move where I got to do a 360 spin. And I duck, I get down really low, so I'm spinning the 360, and he's supposed to swing, 
and obviously missed me because I'm, I'm back down. Well, on the, on, the, on the rehearsal, just before the take, I felt this sword go right here. <laughs> and touched my head, tied my hair, and I stood up and I said, Peter, I don't like that move, man. I said, it's not a good move. And Michael looks and goes, oh, come on, Mike, I'm the New Zealand fencing champion. I'm good at this. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. You know? That was really good. On the very first take, whack, back of the head. I am out, they get me to the hospital, split on the back of my head, I had a concussion, I had a bunch of stitches I put in there. <laughs> so, but Universal let me have a day off. <laughs> so, so, when you do a fight scene, you can watch any fight scene on television. You watch the stunt guys, the actors, anybody who's doing the scenes, the whole idea is eye contact. So if I'm standing up and I gotta kick you and I gotta do a spin, and I'm coming up to do any kind of a kick, the butt, no, to go around to give you a kick, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you, okay? That's what you gotta do, it's all about, it doesn't matter where the rest of your body is, you always make that contact with the, with the person so you know exactly where to go. So Michael, Mr. New Zealand fencing champion, <laughs> you watch the replay of that, and um, I'm down here. He's short. I mean, he's five five. I'm six three. So, but still, I'm down, and he's supposed to be missing me by at least a foot or two, hopefully, right? He's like this. <laughs> Looking that way. Uh, uh, that eyes closed. Looking that way. And I'm lucky he hit me with the flat side of the sword. If he hit me that way, probably be, probably be killed me. So we got rid of, we had real swords, they were blunt, but so we went to aluminum. Really? They call them aluminium down there. <laughs> aluminium. He goes, you Americans. I go, there's 340 million of us, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you say shul instead of uh, sh schedule. Schedule instead of schedule. Like, why do you call it, they call it school, spelled a C-H. Why don't you call it shul? I do a hard time all the time. <laughs> We are a very tiny country of four and a half million people, okay? You're one little pocket of LA County. <laughs> so, but but it's great. What's that? We're ready. We're ready? We're ready. All right, let's watch uh, let's watch Prince guys. So um, guys you want I, where do you want the mic? Where are they at? You come get it? So we're gonna, we're gonna head out to the hallway, right? To the side? All right. So guys, out to the left door up there, and I'll, I'll meet you right out there. There's a, there's a...